Welcome to Deloitte M&A Views, a Deloitte podcast series exploring the latest trends and topics in mergers and acquisitions. I'm Greg Jarrett. Today, we discuss the future of the deal and what changes we might anticipate. We're joined by Ian McMillan, the global leader for M&A and M&A transaction services. Also, Larry Hitchcock, a principal with the merger and acquisition consultative services practice with Deloitte Consulting, LLP. Let's get right to it, gentlemen. The title of this report is Future of the Deal, Winds of Change. That could be a best-selling novel. But Ian, what's the meaning behind that title? Well, at its heart is that we've seen an unprecedented bull run in M&A markets. We've had five years of annual deal values over the $3 trillion mark. And indeed, in the first half of 2019, nearly $2 trillion worth of deals have been announced. And we think that's probably a record for the first half of any year. And indeed, that spate of mega deal continues, 800 billion dollars worth of mega deals have been announced in the first half of 2019, which is definitely a new record. And the US is dominating that segment, accounting for 21 out of the 25 of those announced deals so far this year. Now, whilst the US has been dominating, the rest of the world is a little bit more muted. And in particular in Europe, where deal flows are actually down by 56% compared to the first half of last year. And that reflects uh, both um, some economic uncertainty and in particular some events such as Brexit, which are clearly on the horizon affecting uh, investment decisions. So overall, we actually remain fairly cautious for the rest of the year. We've got economic uncertainty continuing to prevail. We've got the looming threat of trade wars. We've got some political tensions, such as Iran, which are already having a knock-on effect in terms of oil prices. And it is noticeable that in terms of all stock deals, around 30% of deals so far this year have been all stock which is a rise from 19% from last year, which typically happens when there's a slightly more bearish outlook. And indeed, year on year, there's been a decline in volume for the first time in deals since 2014. So to summarize, we definitely feel that there is some change out there. It's been a very strong market for a long time, but there are some headwinds to watch out for and indeed some tailwinds to consider. Thanks, Ian. Larry, can you talk with me a little more about the headwinds and tailwinds that you're seeing? We need to look through the winds that are in the near horizon and and look beyond that, too. Um, You know, M&A in its various forms, I think, remains an attractive option uh, to build capability or to expand into new products or geographic markets, especially when you compare it to greenfield uh, ways of of trying to develop the same areas. But turning then to the the headwinds and tailwinds, you know, there's a bit of political uncertainty in the world, which certainly gives some clients a sort of pause. There's some trade tensions that have been episodic and uh, certainly weigh uh, heavily on the the minds of deal makers. There's been some slowdowns in the economies and M&A activity that Ian mentioned earlier, I think, follows that. As we look ahead, the U.S. elections also bear on people's tendency to to do deals. And historically, uh, election years have seen less uh, deal volume than the uh, periods preceding and following those. There's also been regulatory pressures. As Ian mentioned, a lot of large deals have taken place in the U.S., not all of those have received uh, regulatory approval quickly, and some are still caught up in regulatory review. So as I think about some of the, the headwinds our clients face, those would be something that comes to mind for me. How about tailwinds? Is there a tailwind story here, Ian? So there are some very positive tailwinds out there. You know, probably the biggest out there is private equity. You know, that has been a phenomenally strong force in M&A markets, and they remain a very significant power. There's over $1 trillion worth of dry powder to invest. And indeed, they had their best single year last year since the financial crisis and continue to invest strongly in 2019. Over and above that, companies themselves are sitting on nearly $4 trillion worth of cash reserves, and that enables them to raise record levels of funding for M&A, either from the debt markets themselves or or utilizing some of that cash. And you still have in the U.S. companies riding on boosts from tax reforms, which would underline very strong corporate performance. Elsewhere, we see Japan very, very active, filling the gap that China left in cross-border deals, which actually drove a a 25% increase in cross-border deals so far. One of the really significant drivers we've seen outside of the U.S. has been the growth of activism. And these hedge funds are driving significant M&A activity in terms of non-core divestments, which have totaled nearly $300 billion since 2012. And the final big tailwind I would highlight is around disruptive technologies. So the impact of businesses looking for new innovation, uh, the impact of cross-industry convergence, they're all driving a type of M&A that's at its heart around innovation that is explosive right now with nearly 900 billion of acquisitions in that area since 2015. 
Ian, while you were talking about tech and disruption, I couldn't help but think about tech and new regulations. Is this something that might weigh on M&A activity for tech? Um, it could go either way, let's be clear. I mean, it could it could actually fuel a spate of divestment activity and, and carve-outs, etc. On the other hand, I think probably the bigger driving force is the unrelenting pace of change and disruption that is out there. And I think one of the interesting things is how you're now seeing fairly traditional businesses. You know, we were helping an industrials business acquire a, a data analytics business a couple of months ago. That's a very different type of acquisition. That requires uh, a whole different type of thought process around valuation, around integration, uh, around um, the types of people that are coming into the business. And But those are fundamental moves that clients are having to take now as they see this changing environment around them and trying to respond to that very, very quickly. Oh, we've heard a lot about tailwinds and headwinds, but what's the final takeaway? Is M&A headed for smooth sailing and following seas, Larry, or should we batten down the hatches? I think we're going to continue to see uh, M&A activity, uh, although the forms may vary and change. You know, Ian just talked a bit about the disruptive technologies and the blurring of industry lines that we're seeing. You know, that leads to different forms. It could be alliances, it could be uh, joint ventures, it could be phased sales. So I feel like we're going to continue to see good levels of M&A activity, but maybe in some different forms. And Ian, what do you think about that question? Smooth sailing or rough seas? Um, I think you've got to remember M&A is, is a very significant investment, and therefore, by definition, it's a long-term decision process. I think it's still going to be fairly robust. I would definitely agree with Larry. The types of acquisitions in terms of growth-orientated deals uh, will be significant. There are also, I think, with, with some of those um, headwinds out there, there will be more of a focus on value generation. So people will be looking at reassessing their business portfolios. That could certainly drive significant investment activity. I've mentioned activisms earlier. I think there'll be a lot of rapid turnaround interventions, again, driving M&A uh, to ward off activists. Sometimes that's to acquire high growth businesses. We will definitely see the use of advanced analytics and digital tools uh, changing the way that M&A is done and really helping our clients to understand where they can achieve value, driving more thorough diligence and a slightly longer holistic look at the end-to-end M&A process. In an environment which is itself a little bit more complex, there'll certainly be more thinking around mitigating risk and as well as just absolutely optimizing the integration process. Ian and Larry, you've certainly provided a lot for me and our listeners to consider as we move into the next phase of M&A deals. I'm Greg Jarrett. Thanks for listening to Deloitte M&A Views, sponsored by Deloitte's M&A Institute. This podcast is provided by Deloitte and is intended to provide general information only. This podcast is not intended to constitute advice or services of any kind. For additional information about Deloitte, go to Deloitte.com slash about. We also release new podcasts regularly, and if you subscribe, you won't miss a single one. To stay connected and receive more information on Deloitte's M&A service offerings, visit Deloitte.com slash US slash MA subscribe and follow us on Twitter at Deloitte M&A. Until next time.